there's so much to learn from goats and they're addictive so once you start petting them you can't stop <laughs> hello uh, Peggy Gallup and I'm going to be the new cheesemaker here at Hill Bean been working here for probably a year and a half uh, pretty much got to design the barn not so much the outside but the the layout which is the important part to me because I'll be milking the goats, making the cheese, cleaning the facility, so it was important to me to have everything be pretty much streamlined. It's, it's a long process, a long day, and uh, needs to be efficient. So I worked in a number of barns, a number of cheese places, um, went to just about every cheesemaker in Vermont and um, many in New England, asking trying to learn from their mistakes. Um, a lot of them let me in, let me work with them to make the movements to see what would work, what wouldn't. And I tried to incorporate uh, that, with that knowledge into this building here, uh, both to make it easier for myself and for the people who are going to come after me or hopefully be trained by me was my goal and making a quality product. I know the cheese that I want to make I know the quality I want, hopefully everything will work out and everybody will be pleased with it. Um, I love the cheese, I think that's part of making it, loving the product, loving the process, um, milking the dairy goats, I want to know the milk, the quality of the milk is where it starts, that's your foundation, your milk doesn't get any better after it leaves the animal can only get worse so the way you handle it from the moment it comes out of the goat to the moment it's presented to your customer every step along that line is has got to be pristine in order for the product to be and hopefully that's what I'll be able to produce for Hildeen and hopefully they'll be happy with the product um, we'll be milking approximately 18 dairy goats we'll have 24 total in the herd there'll be three dry yearlings and three kids coming up the line as replacements for does that maybe don't produce as well as I'd hoped um, or get old and retire. The, uh, we'll be kidding every year, having still having the farm camps, the kids will be able to interact with the, the kid goats. I want to do some sort of 4-H groups and stuff like that with the kids, really get them back to their agricultural roots one where people can see the majority of the process. Um, cheese making is basically six to ten hours a lot of times so with the short time that they're here I just I want to be able to show the people as much as possible. We'll be uh, milking the goats. They'll be milked on a, a platform with a milking machine. It'll all go through a glass pipeline so you'll be able to see the milk passing into what I call the bulk tank room where the milk actually flows through the jar and then down through the pump and into the bulk tank. And from that point, then I take it into the cheese making area and that's where we make the cheese. We're gonna be making a fresh goat's milk cheese, which is most people know as the fresh chev. It's kind of like a, a cream cheese um, for those who are unfamiliar with it. Then we'll also be making a feta with the goat's milk. And I also would like to do a goat's milk gouda. And these will all depend on the quantity of milk and if and the demand. If there's a lot of demand for the fresh, then I won't have as much milk for the others. If there's less demand for the fresh, I will have milk. So it'll it we'll just juggle it and see where, where that takes us. In the, a lot of the cheese ma makers in Vermont. I'd say probably 99.9% .9 of them um, are members of the Vermont Cheese Council. And there's a whole cheese trail map that's produced and you can look on this map and go from cheese plant to cheese plant um, to find the artisanal cheeses that are made. I think at this point there's probably 38 um, and possibly more as we're speaking right now. I know there's a couple new ones coming on board. Um, the, artisanal cheese making has really exploded in the New England area. Um, Hill Dean is now doing cheese platters at each of their events, Vermont cheese platters, uh, just to try to introduce it more to the 
the public, a lot of them you can only find at farmers markets. They aren't in the the big supermarkets, um, your local specialty shops, and your farmers markets, or at the farms themselves. So sometimes you really have to just look for it, but it's worth it when you find it. Mechanics of the barn. The dairy goats are going to live in the end of the barn here. The upstairs is all the hay loft. It will be stuffed with hay. That's their winter forage. Um, the hay gets dropped down over the edge into their feeders. Again, very efficient. <laughs> all designed in. And from there they go into the milking parlor. They'll walk up a ramp and onto their milk stand and circle back around and out again so that they can't keep coming in for a second try at the grain because that's where they also get their grain is when they're being milked. It's the enticement to come into the milking parlor. Also to get their udders relieved, but more so for the grain. And the room after that is the bulk tank room where the milk flows to. Then there's a sanitary break. Um, it's basically just a long hallway. The inspectors want a sanitary break between the barn activity and the cheese plant. Um, they view them as two very separate units. There's two different inspectors for the process. One inspects your animals, your barn facility, everything to do with the farm. The other one inspects your food processing plant. So then we go into the cheese making area. You walk into a room where you actually change your shoes change into your white cheese making outfit, hair nets, the whole bit. Nobody gets away with this. <laughs> Even Seth will be wearing his hair net. <laughs> you come in, that's where the cheese making happens. After that, the cheese goes into the next room where whether we'll be waxing the aged wheels of cheese or we'll be wrapping the fresh cheese. It all happens on long tables right in front of the windows where everybody can see. And around the corner is the aging room, and that's where the feta, the goudas, and the Edom and Havarti will be aging in there anywhere from 2 to 12 months. And we're not doing a high production, it's more for the visualization, for the education. Um, so it's only going to be probably anywhere between 50 and 100 pounds a week.